All right, today we're gonna to look at an almost secret feature that Epic has implemented into UFN, which I do not only think is a huge time saver, but it also could be something that could be huge in the future. And it will also allow you to do a few things which you did not even know you could do. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Yes, you can actually create your own prefabs, galleries, devices, islands within UFN. And no, I do not mean you can rename them to prefabs and put them into different folders. There's actually a feature inside the UFN which allows you to create these and it has some really unique things that you can do with it. All right, so you can see right here I have my project folder open and we have a new tab which you usually do not get. Obviously, we have the Columbo which I imported, but you also have a tab which is called galleries here because I already created one. So we're quickly gonna look into that. And if you go here, we get others, we have second folder. And now we can see that I have my test gallery with the Columbo on it. And then we have the inside the test gallery. And you can see that inside we have a character device, we have a light prop and we have the Columbo. And you can also see them right here. But for example, we can just also drag them out just like normal galleries. And we have them here. They're all basically merged together without being destructive. So we can still click on them individually and to drag them around. But if I quickly remove my face, you can see here that they're all grouped under this one category, which is called test gallery. And then I can still drag them around like this, which is obviously great if you have something that you want to pre-build and then you want to use it in a different map. But personally, the cool thing about this is that you can actually animate these galleries and everything inside these galleries will move with it. For example, I have a quick test animation inside the sequencer here. You can see we have the test gallery inside the sequencer. So you can just click here, uh, go to actor in the sequence and then just select the test gallery and then you can animate it normally. The same thing as you would animate anything else. You can see that you know everything moves. The devices move, the light move. But the cooler thing about this is that since it is not moving the actors individually, it is moving the gallery, you can just adjust here. For example, I want Columbo to move here. And then you can see that Columbo will move from this point instead of from the original point where he was. And you can actually see if we quickly go back to the test gallery here, you can see this is the anchor point and it obviously animates around that. So you get the animation from that anchor point instead of having the individuals move themselves. But how do you create these play sets? It is actually fairly simple. On the right side here, if you click into your world, you will see two options. You have the details, which which is currently the thing that you clicked on. So for example, Columbo right here. So if I drag this, I have Columbo and there is a world settings tab right next to it. Should always be there by default. I think it's there. Um, and if you click on that, you see the option down here, creative play sets. And if you activate that, you technically already created a gallery or a prefab in our case. We can see here the category is prefab, but this is obviously our main island here. So we don't obviously want our main island where players play on to be a play set because it will take everything from that island and put it into a gallery or whatever you select. So what we're going to do first, as you see here, I already created a level which is called gallery. To create a level, you can just right click in here and then create a new level. And now we are basically inside a new level. And from here on, we can basically drag and drop everything in here and create a gallery. The first thing we obviously have to do is make sure that we have the creative playset checked. Um, we want to make this a gallery. We name this, um, so we're gonna name this Columbus. We could technically also give it a short and long description. We can give it a thumbnail. So in our case, we just take this random uh, wood texture here, which is going to be our thumbnail. Um, and then we can also generate props. If you click this option here, you will get the extra folder where you get all the single things at once as well. If you do not press the props folder, you get only this gallery tab here. But if you press the prop folder, you also get all the single things in one uh, folder as well, which could be very helpful depending on what you're creating. There's one thing which is super important. You cannot just have random static meshes in, in these galleries. You actually have to transform them into Fortnite props or I think the Fortnite static meshes should work as well. But for example, if you just drag in a simple plane like this from the modeling tab here, also assume that we want to have the skeleton mesh of Columbo in here. And then I created a blueprint class, uh, which is a Fortnite prop now. We want to have this Columbo in here. So we're gonna turn this this way so we know which one is which. So technically we should have all of these things in our gallery grouped as one and then also split up into a single props. This will only work for the Columbo prop because it is a Fortnite prop. I turned it into a Fortnite prop and we will not work for the skeleton mesh or the just static mesh. Um, we can just simply save this by just clicking down here to the save button and we're gonna save. And now you can see that it's actually in the background creating a playset. You can see that barely here in the background creating playset. You can see that everything got saved. Uh, this is now a playset. And we can go back to our main island, which in my case is the project playset here. Um, and we're in here, this is the one that we put in before. And now if we move a little bit to the side, and now if we go into our galleries, we can see that we now have our 
columbos, which we just created with the wood texture here, and we can drag it in. But as you can see, we only have the one columbo, which is the Fortnite prop. So it will not work with anything that is not a Fortnite item or that got turned into a Fortnite. So you can use devices, Fortnite props. I think the Fortnite static message should work as well, um, but you have to turn it into that. So now in our test gallery, where we obviously created the uh, gallery, which we just put in, we can just delete these two because these do not work anyways. And let's just say for simplicity reason, we take any of the Fortnite props, we just drag them in here just like that. So we're gonna click save again. Um, so it usually takes a little bit longer actually to do that. And uh, then we can just go back here to our project. Now if we go back to our galleries, we can go here and drag them out. And now the uh, arch and the floor tile got edited as well. And we can technically just do whatever we want with them now. Uh, they also work individually, so we can drag them around. And you can basically build things on one level and then just drag them into a different level. Um, maybe in the future we actually get the option to have multiple levels, so that would be super beneficial then. Um, I would highly assume we get it at some point in the future. But for now, this tool will obviously allow you to work a little bit more efficiently and obviously so much less destructive than before.